Karen Birchill here, Creative Katie, and welcome to my channel, Mixed Media Creations. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like the video, and leave a comment in the comment section. Today we have a tea lovers mixed media tutorial. So grab a cup of tea or coffee and come join me. Links to supplies can be found in the description box as always. So I'm starting with a 5x7 canvas board, but you can do this on an art journal page of any size. You just might want to change the, the size of the focal point to match what you're working on. So I grabbed out my pinks and purple uh, gel prints and colored papers and I just picked some colors that I liked and I ripped off the edges to get some interesting shapes and I'm just playing with gluing this down. Now some of the pattern you're going to see at the end, some you're going to definitely get the texture from the layering of the papers, but it also gets your brain working. This is the color scheme I'm working on, these are the patterns, and if you're having a hard time getting started, this is a, an excellent way of doing it and using up all those papers. I'm gluing this down with um, Liquitex gel medium in the matte finish. Well, I may want my finished product to be shiny. I don't necessarily want it at this stage to be shiny where I'm putting, and that's why I choose matte. If you want to know how to create some of these interesting gel printed or colored papers, please check out my gel printing playlist. The papers that I'm gluing down here, some are on copy paper, some are on mixed media paper, some are on coffee filters, some are on tissue paper. It, And I like using a variety. I think that adds to it. So I picked out the colors and I picked out Deep Violet and Alizarin Crimson and I'll come back to that. But then I wanted to do some stamping. So I stamped with my archival ink because it's permanent once completely dry and I stamped with the script stamp and I st stamped with this um, part of the Tom Holt, Tim Holtz's Bitty Grunge and I'll put a link to that in the in the description box. It's a good basic grunge texture thing to add to your pages. Now with those two colors, the Deep Violet and the Alizarin Crimson, I'm just using a palette knife and I'm applying it and I'm just kind of scraping it across the surface a little bit. This is just getting, adding some paint in a very different way. And I'm going both ways and I'm just kind of scraping it. I like the effect of this once it's all done. and play with the different palette knives. They'll leave different marks. So after giving this a quick dry, I grab my Prussian Blue. It's always on my table. I use it. It goes with every color combination. It goes with greens. It goes with corals. It goes with reds, pinks, purples. It just, and of course, all the aquas and blues. So I'm just putting this on and I'm thinning it down. And actually, the one right from the tube was thinned down quite a bit as I was just cleaning out the tube of paint. And then I'm applying some Bright Aqua. This is Liquitex Basics. And again, the canvas is a little wet and I just want, you know, a little bit of color here and there. I'm trying really hard not to get too blendy. And as you can see, I'm using colors that are, you know, right next to each other on the color wheel, which when they're wet, they will not make mud and they will just absolutely go together. I'm just careful to take those same colors and put it around the edge of the canvas board. Now this canvas board is magnetic, so it can go on a locker, 
on a whiteboard, on a fridge, what have you. But it can also be popped into a 5 by 7 frame. So I stamped with the script stamp in that bright aqua and then I'm using this bitty grunge again that I'm using the same stamps that I used before for cohesiveness and I'm just stamping with white. I just want to brighten this up a little bit and if you're fast and every, the layer underneath is completely dry you can stamp again and just be careful to you know stamp some I want darker and I want to stamp over the edges. And I am cleaning those stamps after I stamped in acrylic paint. So here I take a detour from what I planned to do. And I decided that I'm going to cut out these teacups out of some of my uh, gel prints or brayered papers. I think they would, the patterns, you know, and I picked some colors that would go well with the pattern. And I'm just tracing it out. This I cut, I believe it was a cut file that I was either a free cut file or one that I purchased from Silhouette. But if you don't have a Silhouette machine or Cricut machine, you can just search the internet for coffee cup clip art, print it off the size you want, and make a template. So I have that one cut and I was going to put two of them there and then I decided that, you know, I'm not. So I'm going to I put the teacup on here and traced it with my Inktense pencil and I use Inktense, but you could use Stabilo L pencil or watercolor pencil. I use Inktense because it will be permanent once it's activated. And now I'm just using the float technique to shade around this teacup. And what that's going to do is make the cup stand out from the background. If you don't want to do this, you can have two teacups that you're using gel prints or colored papers with, or you could have two cups that you're doing this technique with. Each one's going to give a slightly different look. And I am using an angle brush. I learned the tech, this float technique using a flat brush, and I was quite comfortable with that. But I've since, you know, with my mixed media, I've used an angle brush, and I absolutely love using it. This one, I think, is a half-inch angle brush. So I'm giving that a dry and then I'm going on the inside of the cup and I'm putting the highlighting part and I'm doing that in white. And I'll apply as many layers as till I get the effect that I like. But I usually go in on the outside with the dark and the inside with the light and then some areas are going to be lighter or more opaque than others. Doing this float technique and shading and highlighting um, different things I find so relaxing. But you can shade with Stabilo All Pencil, you can shade with Charcoal Pencil, you've seen me doing that. Um, there's many ways that you can get the same effect. So pick one that works for me. And I'll put a technique to my shading um, outlining video in my Technique Tag series where I talk about those. So I have this teacup and I'm just going to do some shading around the edges. Now you could shade with the archival ink or the charcoal pencil or pit brushes, pit pen markers as well.
if you're using the pit brush marker, I would put a coat of um, gel medium or gesso on there so that it um, is a non-porous. Now I'm just going to use my gel medium again, and I put some on the back and some on, on the canvas, and I'm just kind of layering it on top. I would love to be able to buy a coffee cup that actually has that pattern. So you can see how the gel printed um, coffee cup doesn't stand out. So of course I'm going to go in and do some shading around this one. and make it stand out and make it look 3D. And I put the dark around the outside edges and I realized watching the video that I never put it the, the highlight color in inside and it looks okay. The color that I'm using here is um, Payne's Gray, which is a blue tone gray. And it's not quite as stark as black. So I grab my Stabilo All Pencil in white. And I could use a watercolor pencil. And I'm just giving myself a line. Because now I'm going to do some stamping here. Now, in retrospect, I should have lowered this. Because if I want to put this one in a frame, it's just a smidge bit high. So, but that's okay. And I have this set of letters, which I rarely use. So they're going to get a workout on doing these ones and I'm just stamping my sentiment on. And here I thought, oh, it's kind of offline. I find this I find it really difficult to get this all level. I can't seem to even though I put the line there. Simple because I don't stamp a lot. And then I figure, you know what? I'm not even going to try to be perfectly straight. I find the wooden block ones difficult um, to use because you can't see where the other letters are. I much prefer the clear ones to the wooden blocks, but I'm using what I have. So now we have some creativity and you saw that, uh, you know, if once you stamp it, if it smudges or it's absolutely not where you like it, you can go in with a baby wipe and get clean it off. But I do suggest that you make sure that your background is completely dry. I wanted it to be a little bit more opaque. So I go in with my fine liner bottle and I just fill in the letters. Then I think, oh, I'm going to put the dashes all the way around. It just seems to finish this off. And as a fridge magnet, you want the edges to be finished. I put, I also did the shading with the Payne's Gray around the outside edge as well. So this is personal choice. Then I decide I'm going to do it around the coffee cup, which... Okay, you should do the insides before the outsides. So this made it more difficult because I didn't want to smudge the outside. And of course, I didn't take time to stop and, and let it dry. Off camera, I also do the other cup. But again, it's up to you how much you do. And then my husband decides, comes by and he suggests that I put some smoke coming out of, or steam coming out of the coffee cup. And so I just kind of did a little cur curly cue that ended up looking like a heart. So then I did that on the other one as well. But first, because I can't just freehand it, 
I drew it on with my Stabilo All Pencil, which you can wipe off with a baby wipe afterwards and get rid of. And just as a reminder, the acrylic white is just white acrylic paint that's thinned down to the consistency I like to use. So here are some close-ups of the finished product. I really like how this worked out. And, you know, I'll buy a box of tea and this, and it's a nice little gift for a friend or acquaintance. I hope you give this a try. Thanks for watching.